Hey friends, I'm your host, Erin Port, and welcome to the Simple Purposeful Living Podcast. Life can be overwhelming and busy, so once a week, I invite you to join me, and together we will make simple tweaks to uncomplicate the hard parts of our life so we can spend more time doing what we love. Welcome back, friends, to the Simple Purposeful Living Podcast. If you're watching this live on YouTube, well, then you can see me in my turquoise sweater. If not, it's so good to see you as well. But if you haven't joined us over on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and follow over there. But if you're feeling overwhelmed by the holiday season and all the to-dos that you have to do between now and December 24th, I have a simple tweak for you. Brain dump. You know I've talked about this a million times. If your hair feels like it's on fire, stop, drop, and roll. But here's where it helps with the holiday season. There's a lot of things that we could be doing now and later. And the brain dip helps us to put everything down on paper, all the things that you think you need to do, you have to do, right? The daily to-dos plus all the holiday to-dos on top of it. And I put that on the left side of the brain dump. And then on the right side of the brain dump, instead of doing like days of the week or priority one, two, three, four, five, I'll do now early November, mid-November, late November, early December, mid-December. And then I will look at those items and put them in the order that they most make sense for me and my family. And then from there, I can put things on the calendar. I can do some ordering, but I have clear next steps of what I should be doing now. So I'm not waiting all the way until Christmas Eve to be buying all my Christmas gifts. So You can get the Brain Dump Notepad in our Simple Purposeful Living shop, and you can use 10% off code with the code podcast of your order. Plus, right now we have some gift bundles of the Brain Dump Notepad. They make tremendous gifts for teachers, friends, and hostesses. So grab those today and not only simplify your life, but give the gift of simplicity this season. Okay, so speaking of gifts, we are kicking off week two of our Mary Made Easy series. Last week, we talked about holiday planning, and this week, we're going to talk all about gifting because gifting is one of the big things when it comes to the holiday season. So how can we both simplify and streamline holiday gifting so we don't become Mr. Scrooge, right? It is a lot between buying the gifts, wrapping the gifts, thinking of all the gifts that you want to be meaningful. I'm telling you right now, my mom is the most magical Christmas person in the world. You probably think that same thing, right? Like now that I'm older, I look back on Christmas's past and my mom was the holiday MVP. (laughs) And I've gone back and I've told her, and if you haven't done that with your mom, I totally would. Um, But she is just magical when it comes to Christmas gifts. And she, one of the things that she does is she shops early. She just texted me today and was like, I need ideas for the kids. Here's some things I'm thinking about, which is great. And I was like, okay, let me talk to the kids. Um, But she's also very willing to do lots of different things like experiences, gifts, and all of those sorts of things. So we're going to talk about that today and how we can emulate my mom when it comes to Christmas gift giving because I like to learn from others and share that with you. So the first thing when it comes to Christmas gift giving is to create a gift list. So this is so important that I've actually made it part of my free printables. You've heard me talk about the Mary Made Easy uh, printable where and checklist with all the things you need to think about from decorating to planning to gift giving to hosting all the things are right there on one checklist well along with that checklist i've made a holiday shopping made easy shopping list printable that has the gift recipient what you're going to buy them what the budget is what you spent so you can track all of those things right there in one place and i keep them year after year because it's helpful to see kind of what i've spent in the past on an individual what i've bought them in the past And I just keep them in a little uh, hanging file folder in my desk and I can just look back on it and it's super helpful. And maybe it will even spark some inspiration and ensure you don't buy them the same thing you bought them last year. So I love creating a gift list, thinking of people that you need to buy for, family members, friends, clients, teachers, hostesses, anybody that you need to buy for. And then... um, you can start to get generate ideas for things that they that they you think that you might want to buy them, what your budget is going to be. That's the next thing we're going to talk about. But here's a tweak that my husband made that I think is genius. And like I said, it was his idea. So I got to give him credit where credit's due. But he actually keeps a gift list in his phone. And he has each family member listed. So me, the kids. And anytime somebody mentions something that they are interested in or would like, he pops it in his phone because generally we have our phone nearby. 
And then when it comes time for either a birthday, a special, you know, occasion, anniversary, Christmas, he can look at that list and have some ideas. And he also keeps a gift list for himself so that when somebody asks him, he has that. So that's a great tweak. You can just put that right in the notes app on your phone and have that gift list ready. That'll kind of just simplify your life and help you to feel like you're already hitting the ground running if you have that. So great idea, honey. All right. So once you have the gift list and you could do these in either order, but you also need to set a budget. A large percentage of Americans overextend themselves at the holidays, trying to give the gifts that they want to give. And then it comes January and their credit card bill is just through the roof. And it's really important that we are honest about our financial situation and give within our means. Uh, A heartfelt gift can be big or small, and can be just as meaningful. I have a friend, they were, she had just become a stay-at-home mom last year. They didn't have a lot of extra resources, so she made homemade uh, dry shampoo. It was one of my favorite gifts of the year, and she was like, I'm so embarrassed. It It costs like nothing. I was like, the thought counted. It was a great gift, and it was within her financial means, so I love that, and it's a great reminder that great gifts can come in small or maybe less expensive packages. So just a reminder, I mean, I love a good homemade card for my kids, you know, or 10 things they love about me. <laughs> kids, did you hear that? Okay, so set a budget that fits within your means. There's a couple of tweaks you could make to help you save money that I'm gonna share with you because I think these are really helpful and so simple. Number one, my mom uses her credit card points to buy discounted gift cards to shop with at the holidays. So she saves her points all year and then she'll buy like a Gap gift card for 20% off. And then she uses that to buy items, which is so smart. So she's saving money that she's saved up from the year using her credit card points. They pay off their credit card every month. If that's not something that you feel like you can financially do, then don't do it. But I just thought that was a great idea. I use... I have a consignment shop that I give our clothes to and different things. And then I cash out once a year in November. And that is money that I use towards our Christmas gift giving. It's just a little extra extra bonus free money, if you will, that I use towards gift giving. I've also heard of people having a holiday savings account that they just put $20 a week or $20, you know, $100 a week, whatever your budget is aside all year long so that that's a specific budget. We have a gift giving budget in our regular uh, budgeting app. We use the every dollar app on our phones, just the free version, but it is a fund, meaning we're just contributing to it all year long. And that way at the end of the holiday season, by the holiday season, the goal is that that fund would be within, you know, give us the budget that we need. So that's another way to do it. Here's a few other ways to save money on things that you're buying to keep you in budget. Number one, save for later or add to cart. So I do this a lot with Amazon. I'll put it in the cart and just kind of watch it. It's amazing how much it fluctuates. And there's a thing called camel, 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 where you can track Amazon prices and get notified when prices drop. So that's another option for you. I always price compare before I buy. So both the Target, Walmart, and Amazon, they usually have a barcode where you can scan an item, especially an item that's across all platforms, and you can scan it and see what it costs on different platforms. You can also do this with Shop Savvy or Honey or even Google Shopping to make sure you're getting the best bang for your buck. And here's another hot tip. This in-store price is not always the same as the online price. So make sure you're double checking and using uh, uh, shopping apps like Rakuten or Honey to see if you can get a code for free shipping or an extra discount. Those are great as well, okay? Like I said, the shopping with a gift card discount or discounted gift cards through your credit card company or any of those. Of course, you want to also take care or take advantage of cashback programs. I have so many friends that use Ibotta and Rakuten to, they scan their their receipts or they shop through that app and they were able to save money. So highly recommend that too, to just get a little bit extra. Make sure that you're keeping an eye on those free shipping thresholds. I got hoodwinked the other day. I bought a couple of pairs of shoes on, um, on Walmart and the free shipping threshold was $35. My total was $34.97. And I didn't even realize. So I ended up paying shipping on the, on the on the purchase, which I did not get back when I returned one of the shoes. So just be really careful of those shipping, those free shipping thresholds at Simple Purpose for Living. It's $50 free shipping. Um, 
And those are great options as well. Look for coupon codes as well. Okay, the other thing is not just to shop during the holiday season. Now, I know this isn't going to help you right now, but I like to shop throughout the year, especially for things that you're stuffing in certain socks, if you know what I mean, or little things that you're like, oh, that would make a great hostess gift, or my sister would love that. So point in case, I bought my sister's Christmas gift several months ago. I saw it. I bought one for myself, full disclosure. That's another hot tip. If you like it, probably (laughs) the people in your life would like it too. Um, but I went ahead and I purchased it. Now, the trick is make sure you remember where you put things, make it, make a note of it so that you don't buy her, them another gift because that can happen too. But even shopping clearance sections this year at the end of the season, not only just for gifts, but also decor items will save you money. Of course, the sales rack, all of those sorts of things. I also love discount stores, places like Home Goods, TJ Maxx, Nordstrom Rack. I can normally find like Melissa and Doug or certain gifts that I'm like, oh, that's a good, that's the same price. That's the same thing I was going to buy online, but it's discounted here. It does take a little more hunting and a little more time. And if that's not on, time isn't on your side, you know, you'd rather spend the financial cost. That's totally understandable. But I totally recommend shopping at those sorts of places because you can save some money by shopping at discounted stores. Things like beauty blenders and makeup headbands and all those sorts of things. I love to get those at TJ Maxx because you save a good amount of money by doing that. And it doesn't matter what the brand is um, for those sorts of things. Okay. The other thing I want you to remind, remind you about is using reward points or story loyalty programs. Don't forget about affiliate programs. Simple Purpose for Living just started an affiliate program. If you love our products and you share our products, you get a 15% kickback. Um, and if you right now through November 15th, you can also share a 15% off coupon code. So it's good for the people that you're sharing it with. Plus you get that kickback too for helping me sell the products. It's a blessing for the business and a blessing for you. So be looking at those affiliate programs as well. And one other store I want you to think about is Costco and Sam's Club. Just the other day, my girls were mentioning they love my heated blanket. They want to take it to their bedrooms. I'm always like, you have to bring it back. So that's on their wish list this year. And I noticed when I was at Costco the other day, that it was $22.99, which is about $8 cheaper than the one I was going to get them on Amazon. So here's the thing. This is the next thing I'd consider doing is making a shopping list. Yes, this is different than your gift list. So your gift list is all of your ideas, your budget, how much you spent. I consult this on a weekly basis. But then from there, I make a shopping list of things that I need to buy. And as I check them off, I can cross them off the list. Things like the heated blanket. So then when I'm out and about, I can I will even, before I go into stores, if, even if I'm just going to the grocery store or just running into Target, I can look at that list. And if I come across something, again, I can price check, I can compare and be like, actually, this is a good deal. And you can purchase it and then bring it home. All right. And just a hot tip on when you're purchasing things, especially if it's you're not quite ready to wrap, because I'm not always ready to wrap when I'm shopping, is I like to keep things. Are you ready for it? My kids aren't listening. I like to keep things in my Christmas decor bins because they're empty during the holiday season in my back room. So this doesn't work if you haven't decorated yet, but that's just another hot tip of where I store things in my Christmas decor bins. They're empty. Great place. All right. Next thing is um, to shop early when it comes to shopping too. I just want you to think about that because Actually, some of the items, things like Legos, Barbies, American Girl, some of those things when you can find them on Amazon or Target or Walmart are actually cheaper before peak season. And again, you can look at Camel, Camel, Camel and Honey to kind of price check and see the fluctuation. But if you're interested in Legos, a lot of those are on sale right now and you might get a better deal than even on Black Friday. So just a hot tip there. Okay, so you have your your gift list, you have your budget, you have your shopping list. Now I want you to think about some personalized gifts that you're going to want to probably get to ordering right now, whether that's your Christmas cards. I talked about last week in the planning episode, I like to give a photo book of the year. I love a good deadline. It holds me accountable. So every year, the first gift we open on Christmas Eve is my family's photo book of the year. The kids love it. Just the other day, Quincy had them all spread out. And he loves them, loves looking back on themselves. And it's a great way. Then I have like a a, um, a folder on Shutterfly of each year. So someday when my kids graduate from high school, 
they'll have some photos. Plus, it's just another way to back up my photos. They're not just on my phone. They're not just on iCloud. They're also on Shutterfly. So I love all of those reasons. Plus, they're just my favorite. And here's how I do the photo book. Just to keep it simple so it doesn't get out of control and take forever, I go through my phone and I just start clicking um, and I try to get to about 150 photos from the year. Yes, you have to be painfully picky, but, and then basically I just put them into the Shutterfly app and have them basically upload them in order. And I group them just, you know, like winter, spring break, uh, sports, whatever. And I just kind of group them. I don't do any captions besides maybe like spring break 2024 or summer 2024. Just keep it super simple. The photos are in there have the photo book printed, but it also like anything with like photo mugs. My kids just brought home this art thing that they did where they, they draw a piece of art and then you can have it printed on note cards or a canvas tote. We love to do those for my grandma and my parents, because what are you going to get? My 92 year old grandma, she has everything she needs, but she loves my kids and she loves still giving notes. So we get her those and that's a perfect gift. So, but you want to make sure you order those things now, those personalized gifts. That's something that, like I said, early on in the episode with the brain dump, those are things you can take care of now. So you make sure they get here by Christmas because you guys, I had the funniest thing happen. I ordered, I've always ordered through Shutterfly. We're not sponsored. They don't know who I am. But one year I ended up getting a better coupon code for Walgreens. So I did Walgreens. Well, I did not even look until I went to wrap. Like I just put it all, it came, I put it in the basement. I went to wrap my dad's mug. It wasn't his. It was some random person, random family from Michigan. I ended up having to wrap that up because they sent me a new one, but it wasn't going to arrive until Christmas. That cup is still at the lake and it is my designated cup that I use when I go there. So fun fact, it was a good story, super funny, but make sure that you order early in case of snafus like that. Okay, so next, now that you've got all of those sorts of things considered, I want you to think about setting up a gift wrap station. Again, these are such tiny tweaks. I don't want you to get overwhelmed or bogged down like, oh, Erin says I have to have this, this, and this. This is just meant to simplify your life. If you've got a system in place, remember, this is not, like, I'm not meant to, like, my one size fits all. Do what works for you. But I always share these ideas in hopes that they are going to make your life simpler. So I have that antique dresser I have right at the front door. My mom gave it to me. It was in, we moved every two years, but it was in every house's entryway growing up. And so she gifted it to me and it's been in our entryway in every house that we've had. In this house, I made sure I had a wall so I could put it on in our entryway when we were building. But that is where I keep our wrapping paper. I also keep candles in there and our, I have a couple of tablecloths, those sorts of linens I keep in there as well. But I have a drawer for wrapping paper. I have a drawer for boxes that I fold down, you know, like gift boxes, shirt boxes, all that kind of stuff. And then I have a, a drawer for uh, gift bags and tissue paper. And then of course there's a box with like gift tags, wrap, uh, stickers, tape, scissors, a, 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 a pen to write their names on it. All that kind of stuff is right there too. And it is just so helpful because I do most of my wrapping paper either on my office desk or my dining room table. So I can just grab that stuff. It's right there all in one place and I can grab and go and wrap easily. I could even just do it on the floor of my entryway as well. Um, and then something that's like the tiniest tweak but is so helpful is at the beginning of the season, because most of the year I just have the birthday, you know, we get, we save all the, the birthday gift bags as long as they're in good condition. So those are tend to be on the top of the bot bags and the wrap birthday wrapping paper tends to be on the top. So I just flip it all. So the Christmas wrapping paper is on top and I go through the uh, bags and I just make sure those are all organized and I put those on top. I make sure I have all the tissue paper I need. I have all the tape that I need. The tape is currently missing at my house because I have a pint-sized person who's going to ask Santa for his own tape. <laughs> um, but I make sure I have all that and then I add those things to the shopping list too um, so that I have enough tape, enough wrapping paper, enough tissue paper. We always have enough gift bags, but and then if you need anything else, you add that to your shopping list. So that's ready to go. So when it's time to wrap, you don't have to go scrambling to the store. That's something, like I said, that you could take care of and put on your early November brain dump and have it taken care of. So that gift wrap station is ready to go when you're ready to wrap. 
Okay, and then the one other thing I want to talk to you about, two last things when it comes to gift giving, is experience gifts. So my grandparents were the pioneers of this in my family. So my grandma and grandpa Weatherby, my dad's parents, I can't remember them ever giving me an actual gift. And that's not a bad thing. They used to, instead of gifts, we would go every Thanksgiving. And as we got older, you know, they picked Thanksgiving because it was the less desired holiday. We would go every Thanksgiving to New Smyrna Beach, Florida. And they didn't have a lot of money to buy like a second home down there like a lot of people do these days. But they bought a couple of timeshares. That was like their investment that they they bought in our family. And they had enough timeshares that all of us could go down. That was their gift to us. We paid our own way with flights and food, but they provided the, the, ho- the, the place to stay. And we'd all go down there every Thanksgiving. We went down there for probably 20 plus years. We actually have it on the calendar to go next Thanksgiving just to go back and remember my grandparents because it was so meaningful to us growing up. It was a favorite. And I just love that experience gift. They invested in that. That was their gift to us. And it was just so special. And we talked about it at my grandpa's funeral that... They never gave us traditional gifts, but when they'd babysit us, they'd always take us on a trip. One time we went to Niagara Falls and we ended up in the honeymoon suite with my grandparents. Such a funny memory. Um, But those experience gifts really do linger and last and the moment ends up becoming a really special memory. So in that spirit, I have created a blog post with 50 experience gift ideas. And it's broken down into categories from young kids to elementary kids to tweens to teens to adventure seekers to sports lovers to crafty people. 50 different ideas to get your juices flowing when it comes to experience gifts. Plus in that blog post, I talk about how you can gift it in a fun way that's not just a piece of paper. So in case you need some ideas there as well. So I just wanted you to talk you to have that resource. And that is in the show notes. If you need some ideas for experience gifts, especially for people who have everything, my parents, my in-laws, here are some ideas that you could give them that would be a fun experience um, that they can enjoy at a later date. So that's there as well. Okay. And then the last thing before we're done with talking about gift giving is there is always a person a place you're going, a hostess that you were not planning on that you need a gift for. And so I have a gift basket in my pantry and I just keep a couple of things in there, you know, things that I enjoy, maybe a candle or simple purposeful living products are my favorite things to gift people because they're super practical. They don't add a lot of, they're consumable. They don't add a lot of clutter. You can add a little pen to it. And then a couple of gift cards at the holiday season because it is without fail that I think I've gotten every teacher or every, you know, perf- you know, person I want to get and I forget somebody. And so having a couple extra gift cards if you're getting Starbucks gift cards or a local coffee gift shop. Also, gift cards, you can buy discounted gift cards at places like uh, Costco or Sam's Club. And I love that they have local ones. I know our co- local Costco has a gift card collection. It's four gift cards to the local coffee shop and it's $80 for a hundred dollars worth of gift cards. So that's a great way to buy in bulk for like teachers or, you know, maybe like we've done this for Scott's parents before where we buy them a hundred dollars worth of gift cards to a local nice restaurant. Um, it ends up being $80 for us, but a hundred dollars for them. So that makes a really nice gift for them. Um, and those gift cards, like I said, you can, you can keep them on hand, especially if it's a place you like to go to like target or whatever, then if you don't use them, you can use them in January to purchase things. And most retailers target included, there is a time every year where they discount their gift cards. I believe targets is at the very beginning of December, but just keep an eye on the weekly ad. And I'll be sure to keep an eye out on that too, because you might as well save a little bit of money buying gift cards that people can enjoy. And again, it goes back to like what my mom did at the beginning where you could even buy discounted gift cards and shop with them to save a little extra money as well. So uh, that's just another hot tip as well. Okay, so that is all I wanted to talk to you about with holiday gifting. Be thinking about your holiday shopping list, your budget, your shopping list, of course, your experience gifts, your gift wrapping station. If you kind of process this during the podcast episode and just kind of be thinking about it, you're going to be leaps and bounds ahead just because you've already made a plan for how you're going to do this. You can start getting your juices flowing about things you want to buy your family. And uh, it shouldn't stress you out as much when you can just have these little tweaks in place. 
um, you can enjoy the holiday season. And one last thing when it comes to shopping and wrapping for gifts, make it an experience. When my husband and I first got married, we would take a time, we would have a date night where we would go out and go shopping. My friend Lindsay of Lindsay Sweet World, I know this is a tweak that she's done that I wanted to share with you. And it's at Lindsay Sweet World, but she and her husband go on a date day. Every year they get hot cocoa at Starbucks. Actually, I think it's probably like a peppermint mocha and they go and they do their shopping and they have a blast. And I just think sometimes we can take a chore and turn it into an experience and it becomes so fun. My husband and I used to do this. We'd always buy a candle that smells like a Christmas tree because we have a faux Christmas tree and then we do our holiday shopping and it was just really special. Another thing that you can t- take from a chore to an experience is gift wrapping. My daughter loves to gift wrap and so oftentimes for things like sibling gifts or grandparent gifts. I'll put it all in boxes and just label the box like with a sticky note who it's for so she knows. But then we'll turn on a Christmas movie and we watch Christmas movies while we gift wrap. You can turn on some tunes, have some hot cocoa. Again, any way that you can take a chore and just elevate it with music or a movie or something that you enjoy eating, it makes it so fun. All right, so remember, you can find the Marry Me Easy checklist, the holiday shopping checklist in the show notes along with these, these, uh, all these tips as well as our 50 experience gift ideas all in the show notes. And be sure to tune in next week. We're going to be talking about decorating so you won't want to miss that. Until next time, I hope this helps you make Merry easy and sidestep Scrooge as you simplify and streamline the holiday season. Make sure you're following along on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook for all of the festive and fun tips and tweaks this holiday season. Remember, you don't have to simplify your or you don't have to overhaul your life to love it when one simple tweak will do. Have a great week, friends. If you like this episode, it would mean so much if you'd share it with a friend or leave a quick rating and review so others can find our show. Until next time, you can find me at Simple Purposeful Living on Instagram and Facebook.